I know a lot of you have probably created React applications in the past, but I bet that most of you have never actually tried creating one without using the create React app command. And the reason for that is because it's just simple, it's easier. Whenever you're just excited to create a new React application, you never really want to waste time setting up stuff and creating the, the basis for it when you can just run a simple one line command on your terminal and just generate a whole application without actually doing anything. But there are benefits to it. You can customize your project more, you can understand more how a React application works under the hood. And more importantly, you will be doing it from scratch and only pros in React can actually do this. So my recommendation for this video is if you are a beginner React, don't um, watch this video. Um, only watch this video if you at least know the basics of React, because if not, it will be pretty useless for you. This is more for people who want to understand React more, and I'm pretty sure that whenever, if you don't know how React is built underneath itself, um, this video can help you in some way. So with that in mind, this is how to create a React application without using Create React Tab. So first things first, I'm gonna be quick in this video, but the reason for that is because everything is pretty quick. The thing that takes the most amount of time is understanding um, everything, right? And the first thing you actually need to do is check to see if you have Node installed into your computer. Now, I obviously have Node installed um, to see the version, or if you have installed, you just run Node-V. Um, I'm pretty sure you have it installed because um, like I mentioned, this video is for people who um, already know the basics of React and for React to run, to even run Create React App, you need Node.js in your computer. So I'm not going to show you how to install Node.js because I find it to be a waste of time. But what you really need is you need to use npm or yarn to create a package.json. Now to create one automatically, you just run the command npm init and you put dash y, which will basically um, say yes to all of the different questions that the terminal will ask us and generate this package.json file right over here for us. You can see there's a lot of stuff already implemented in it. Um, you can change them however you want, um, but for now we'll keep it just like this, which is fine. Like I mentioned, a lot of the stuff we're gonna be doing is just installing packages because um, that's what we have to do. Right? We're creating a React application. Whenever we just run the command, it usually installs everything for us. But right now we need to do it from scratch. So the first packages that we really wanna install are all of the dependencies related to Webpack. So Webpack is an open source JavaScript module bundler. Its main purpose is just to compile the JavaScript modules. Um, and uh, since there will be a lot of different files, um, it will basically generate a single file or it can generate a couple files as well, but mostly like a very small amount of files, which will be, uh, its purpose will be to actually run your app. And how we're gonna install this is by first installing um, it as a dependency, as a, like a de developer dependency. So I'm gonna say save dev, then I'm gonna say webpack like this. This is the first package we're gonna install, which is just the webpack package. Then we're gonna install its CLI. So we're gonna say webpack dash CLI. Uh, it will facilitate us using webpack. And then we're gonna install the webpack dev server, which again, will be very useful for us. So I'm gonna press enter and it will start installing. And I'll be back in a second when it finishes. As you can see, it finished installing everything related to Webpack. Um, and the next set of dependencies that we need to install are all of the dependencies related to React. So um, when you install a React application using the create React tab command, it automatically installs two dependencies which are fundamental to React. And you may notice them, um, but a lot of you guys don't really think about it because you are using the command, right? Those two packages are the React package, there's an actual React um, dependency, uh, which is the library. So we're installing the library by using the npm install command. And we also need to install the React DOM library. So we'll press enter. And as you can see, it is actually pretty quick to install both of the packages. And now we have to install everything related to Babel. And Babel, as many of you guys might know, is another open source project um, in JavaScript, which its main purpose is basically to convert um, JavaScript code into backwards compatible versions of JavaScript. It will just make everything work because you know that JavaScript updates itself like, I don't know, like a lot of times in a year. Um, so there's like almost like 15 versions of JavaScript now. Um, so it, you need something like this to make it so that your application is compatible with all the different versions that are available. So with Babel, we're gonna have to install a lot of stuff. I'm gonna type out all of the actual packages we're gonna install and all of them are gonna be um, 
uh, de uh, like dev dependencies. So um, when I put all of them, I'll be back in a second. Not to mention all of them will be in the description. So you can just copy them and paste it and it should be fine. Okay, so as you can see, this are all of the packages we are installing. They are a lot of them. Um, if you want, you can take a look at which like what each of them does. Like even I don't know a lot of like as much as I wish I could about Babel. Um, I wish I was better at it. But basically, um, all of them are extremely useful for making this work. For example, Babel Core, I know it's the core package for Babel. I know that um, Babel ESLint provides us with, a, it's like a parser that will allow ESLint to run inside of our inside of our project. And all of them have their own purposes, but to make it work in React, because React naturally already has them installed, we need to install all of them. So just copy and paste and then just run. I'm gonna run it again and it should be fine. Now that we've finished installing everything related to Babel, um, I'm going to actually start creating the files. I'm going to give a stop on installing packages for now. And I'm going to start creating um, the two files that are necessary for Babel to work in our project. First file that I'm going to create is the dot Babel or C file, which you probably see in a lot of different projects out there. Um, and basically, I'm just going to call copy and paste what we have to put inside of here. Okay, so as you can see, these are the two things we added into our, um, our file, it is just um, a JSON with, um, first of all, a presets a key and its value, it's an array containing the two different presets we're going to have in our project. And if we want to add plugins like we did over here with the plugin transform runtime package, um, we can add it directly over here. This file mainly is used as kind of like a configuration for for Babel. So um, keep in mind with that. And we need it in order for it to work in our application. But the second package we need to install is one related to Webpack, which is actually the configuration file for Webpack. So both of them will have um, its own configuration files. Um, we just created the one for Babel and now we're creating the one for Webpack. So to create the one for Webpack, we're going to create a new file and say webpack.config dot js like this. So it is a JavaScript file, but it's it's it knows that webpack it, it is a config for webpack. So that's why I have an icon right over here. Um, I'm going to paste the code again. And let's go over what each of the stuff means. Okay, so as you can see, I just pasted everything. And I want to go over exactly what a lot of this stuff means. Because um, I honestly feel like this is probably the most important file we've we've created so far. Um, it basically, its main purpose is to define a lot of the important aspects of the react application, mainly its entry point, as you can see over here, we're creating an entry point as our index.js file, um, where the output for the file will be. So it will be on the public folder, which is very common to exist in a react application. Also, we're determining how our project will run. So we're saying it will be targeted towards a web application, which is what a, a React app usually is. Um, we're also setting up the information related to the dev development server. So we, de we determined our port, which usually when you run create React app, it runs on 3000. So I put that as 3000 as well. Now the static files, which um, are basically the files that won't be changing. Um, so mostly the files that are not React based, um, they will all exist inside of the public folder. It will include like the index.html file that is that includes the, the root div, everything that we're going to create will be inside of this folder. Um, we can also set up a lot of other stuff like um, if it's open, if it's hot, if it has live reload. Now the resolve part over here, you can set up a list of extensions for which if uh, multiple files share the same name, but have different extensions, then um, basically Webpack will resolve the file w for which has the extension listed first in this list, which in our case, will make the JS files be first, um, but then the JSX files because JSX would be um, also a method in which you you write uh, react files. Um, but I usually use JS, so I put it first. Um, but we can add more stuff like we had a JSON over here, we can also add um, an extension for TypeScript. So we can say something like dot slash TS, um, not slash just dot TS. Um, but basically, this is the main purpose of um, this part over here. Now the last thing it's a bit more complicated. So this part over here, it's a bit different. And it's the hardest part, in my opinion, out of the all of the things we, we went over on the webpack file, um, its main purpose is to determine the rules um, for which your your compiler will um, deal with different files and, and their extensions. Um, I don't fully understand um, how to develop this on my own. I actually got this from um, somewhere else. I already had this project set up. So I'm just going over what I already did in the past. Um, but this is what I usually would do when, if I was setting up um, a React application like I am right now. 
So just keep in mind that this over here basically gives the rules for the compiler to, to follow, right? So this is the end for our webpack.config file. Now that we have this done, we actually are almost done. We just need to focus on creating first our package.json file, which as you can see, it includes all of our dependencies, everything that we've installed so far, but we do need to make some changes. Um, first, we need to um, specify how like with the scripts in which we're going to use to start our application. So for example, um, we're going to have a start script, right, which is what happens when you run npm start. And for us over here, what we want to do is we want to run the, the command webpack dash dev server. So webpack already will allow us to create our development server if we run this command. So instead of writing every time on the terminal webpack dev server dot, we'll just run npm start and we will follow the script. Then we also want to set up the build command. And the build command is pretty simple. Um, whenever we want to build this application, we'll just run webpack dot and it will know what to do. Now we can save this and this should be it for our package.json. Now all we have to do is actually create the folders that are going to include code. So for example, I'm going to create over here, our public folder, which um, will be used to generate uh, our actual application it will be the root of our application. And we're actually going to generate our source folder, which is actually where we're going to run or write our react code. So if our, for our public file or folder over here, I'm just going to generate an index.html file, which is where our HTML will start. And this is basically what we're going to paste in this file. Um, it's a very simple HTML file. It's only actual um, the only actual thing that I see over here that um, would be a, will be different um, is the the root over here. This is where our whole React application will exist inside. So if you didn't know, um, since React works in a way where it keeps updating itself, um, it doesn't download more and more HTML pages whenever you move throughout your application. It's actually a single HTML page, which is this one over here. Everything which gen generated through JavaScript inside of this root, root div over here, and we need it because that's where our whole project will live inside. So this is kind of the idea of, of how we generate a React application. Um, but to actually make the HTML file make sense, we also need to generate our index.js file inside of our um, source folder. This file is also existent in almost every Create React app um, project, and it's very important. We're also going to create an app.js file like this because it is the first component you create in React. So um, this is going to be the, the, the entry point of our React app. So we're going to put it right here. It's very common, again, to have an app.js. So keep in mind that we need it as well. But for the index.js, this is how our file will look. I just pasted this over here. It is basically the same as what would usually come in a create React app command. Um, all it does is it imports both React and React DOM from, from our project. Um, it also imports our app component and it tells React to render on the DOM um, the app component inside of the div, which they grab from the HTML page. Um, and the div is the one with the ID called root which is again, the one that we created over here. So we're basically just telling react to put everything that exists inside and below the app component inside of that div, which is amazing, because it means it will work. Then we'll close this. And here, we're actually going to generate our app component. And it's pretty simple. We're going to do it from scratch, we're going to say const app um, equals to an arrow function. And it creates a function which returns a div saying, uh, this was made from scratch, like this. Also, hello world, because it's the first thing we usually do uh, whenever we do something new. So I'll just put this over here. And at the end, let's just export default our app component so that we can catch it inside of our index.js. So now that we've done this, um, we only have a few small changes that we need to make in order to actually make this work. So the first thing is, um, when we run our webpack command over here to generate um, to make webpack work, you can see that it will generate an output file called main.js and it will put it inside of the public folder. Right now we don't have the file, we only have the index.html file. But this file will be generated when we run our command because it will kind of convert everything into a single file, right? All of the code into a single file. Now, um, the problem is, as of right now, our index.html file doesn't know that it, ha it needs to have access to this file. So we're going to paste over here a script um, 
reference, like making a reference to the main.js file, uh, which doesn't exist right now, but will be auto generated when we run npm run build, which is the, one of the last things we're going to do. So we have to do this right here. Also, um, in our webpack.config over here, you should see you should keep um, the path exactly how it is right here. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is because um, the index.js file, um, it will be it will be recognized directly uh, without having to put the the slashes for the actual path. However, for the package.json, we do need to put um, a dot source slash index.js file over here, because that's technically where um, our index.js file is, right? It's inside of the source folder. And we need to access it directly like this. So it won't work if you don't have um, this like this. However, although um, we don't have to put um, the source folder path directly over here, we still need to put a dot slash because or if we don't, um, webpack will just give us errors and it, it won't work at all. So I'm going to save this right now. Uh, let's close all of this, it should be working. Um, if you run our command, we should be generating a react application, which just shows this over here. So in order to test this out, we're just going to run npm run build. And uh, let's see if it's yeah, it successfully generated everything. We should see that now there's a main file inside of our public. And this file, it's full of things, which is necessary to make our application run. And now if we run the command npm start, you should see that it will actually not work. And I'll explain why. So as of right now, it's not actually working. Um, if we inspect element, you should see it will say that um, you need to import react because it's not defined. Now, although you're not using the react library directly on your app component, you do need to import it over here at the top, or else the code will just not run. So when I import this, and I save it, it will automatically update itself. And as you can see, we are generating a react application, which is exactly what we wanted. It works perfectly like a normal react application, we can import stuff like, um, I'll just create a simple react pro program over here and just show you guys. As you can see, I just coded a very simple um, counter app and like using use state using all the normal react features. And if I come to my application, and I click on increment, it works perfectly, meaning that the actual code is running a react app. And uh, that, that's amazing. Honestly, um, I would recommend doing this if you are comfortable setting up stuff. Even if you're not, this is just a cool thing for you to know. It's a cool thing, a cool experience for you to actually learn more about React. Um, and uh, um, I would recommend still sticking with create React app, because it just sets up stuff um, a lot more optimized than what we did over here. Um, it's faster because like, wow, like, they made it in a way such that it's the best that they can do, you know, um, customizing it yourself, obviously, you can you can make it better for your specific project, but it requires you to have a lot of knowledge on the topic. So I would just do it once or twice to get the hang of it. And then if you need it in the future, at least you've learned this in the past. So this is basically it. If you want the code, all the code will be in the description. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. Subscribe because I'm posting twice a week and i would massively appreciate if you guys could help support the channel and yeah that's basically it i really hope you guys enjoyed it and i see you guys next time